Black Panther, T'Challa won and prevented a global war. But what if Killmonger won? Killmonger struck down T'Challa, feeling he got justice for his father. Rising to the surface, Nakaya in a fury would charge him and be turned into a corpse. With the Dora Milaje either eliminated in pieces on the battlefield or swearing loyalty to Killmonger. Everett Ross, Mabaku, Shuri and Queen Ramunda would be captured for interrogation and for Killmonger's false image of being an understanding leader. As he announces the loss of T'Challa and the rise of Wakandan domination because who would trust a man that would harm his auntie? Launching new squads to liaise with his connections in Hong Kong, London and New York as he previously said his warlords were waiting and he had made some very powerful friends, recognisable faces. The New York warlord, none other than Wilson Fisk, the kingpin, understanding Killmonger's plight of being the underdog and finding strength in Tumpin Man down. He would lead the East Coast takeover of America. London, through the scroll leader Gravik, fed up of the promise by Fury to help find a new home, one Killmonger was now promising in the European continent as he was tired of being colonised. While the Mandarin's love for conquest would see him oversee the Hong Kong invasion and control of Asia, relentlessly trying to find ways to bring back his lost wife, seeking his son Chang chi to avoid the oncoming devastation. As simultaneous attacks launch across the globe, the divided Avengers would be helpless, half being held back by the Sokovia Accords as the world's government tried to limit the initial damage and deal with it militarily, the other half in hiding, following the events of civil war, while the Hulk and Thor talk to space rocks and have kids with dead trims. After the initial destruction, Killmonger would threaten world leaders with one thing clear. If heroes get involved, they will pay directly. With Wakanda requesting that nations give up their land and their freedom, all the destruction will continue, stalling with a life peace. The scroll have wiped out authority in the United Kingdom within days preventing hero intervention, thanks to scroll shifters in top positions seceding to Wakanda, with Wanda and Vision in Scotland laying low, not knowing their true strength, as members of the Eternals simply don't get involved. The Ancient One orders worldwide protection of the Sanctums but refuses to get the sorcerers in combat nor reveal her identity as she prepares Stephen Strange to stop Dormammu and the cults that follow him. In New York, the street level heroes had enough of Fisk, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones and Daredevil begin fighting back but the Wakandan technology is too advanced, leaving them decimated in seconds. As Peter Parker witnesses Luke Cage taking his final stand, he argues with Tony to intervene, who consistently tells him it's not his fight yet. Sick of watching heroes get bodied, Spider-Man jumps in, taking out multiple foes until a vibranium-covered echo enters the fray, bodying Peter Parker in seconds, leaving Iron Man to step in, fighting Echo. In a losing battle, the head is hit clean off the armour and it's revealed it was merely a drone. The real Tony had exited the armour to save Pete in his final moments. Tony escapes, but at what cost? Filled with guilt, vowing to fight Vibranium with Vibranium. But on his flight home, he receives a call from Killmonger, who introduces him to former employee Quentin Beck, or as he was now going by, Mysterio reminding him there will be consequences and he will get what he deserves for ruining Beck's life work and calling it bath. Pepper notices flames, but her fate is already decided. And as Tony arrives, he sees nothing but destruction. Meanwhile in LA, the Mandarin has tracked down his son Shang-Chi, forcing him to return home. In exchange, he won't decimate the West Coast for now. As Gravit begins to move across the United Kingdom, Nick Fury comes out of hiding, warning him to stop, asking him what he aims to achieve. Gravik in a rage tells him about plans to conquer Europe and make it the new Skrullos, praising Killmonger, revealing he doesn't want peace, he wants reparations and he's willing to take it by any means. A slightly less radicalised Gravik lets Fury go, believing he's no threat, wanting him to live with the guilt of causing Earth's destruction, massively underestimating him. Fury secretly recorded this conversation, broadcast it to the world leaders, showing them what's at stake, ending false negotiations and leading to resistance movements as they realise it's all or nothing. Heroes across the world are given permission to fight back. Hawkeye even gets off house arrest, but it's hopeless. Ant-Man refuses to protect his daughter. Not only does nothing impact Vibranium, but they don't know the true location of Wakanda. Stark, recovering Vibranium fragments from the remains of Peter and Pepper, scans the planet for its signals, locating some in the middle of the sea, convincing Thunderbolt Ross to unite the nations in recovering it and outfitting what's left of the heroes willing to fight. Meanwhile in Wakanda, Everett Ross, Mbaku, Shuri and Ramunda are in their cells, awaiting trial for treason as none other than Bucky Barnes plans a breakout with his new arm and the thought deceased Okoye. The pair put their plans in motions at the dead of night, but as they escape, none other than Killmonger seeks to stop them. Mbaku 
unforgiving of himself, takes a final stand in his heart knowing he is worthy of being the Black Panther Wakanda needs. The last thing Mbaku sees is Killmonger lunge at him as he thinks of the late T'Challa, a man who bested him in combat and wasn't too proud to lean on him when he needed. Now was his turn to channel the might of the Jabari. As Killmonger and Mbaku fight relentlessly, enough time is brought to get Okoye and the gang to the safety of the jet and out of Wakanda. Meanwhile, Stark Industries and the world government dig for vats of vibranium, striking the wrong place at the wrong time, vexing the wrong person. None other than Namor rises, wiping out half the crews in moments. Stark flies in, disabling Namor, or at least stunning him long enough for his crews to be airlifted to safety, with Tony forces managing to secure a large enough amount of vibranium that could be analysed and potentially mimic. As Everett, Ross and co escape with their lives, they reunite with Fury, Thunderbolt, Ross and Stark, revealing the location of Wakanda. Although Stark hates Bucky, it was his rescue of Ross that could let them take out Killmonger and that he's willing to hold a truce, at least until Killmonger is eliminated. A vexed Namor approaches Wakanda, but Killmonger from his years of combat and war isn't a chump and puts his foot down, rather than succumbing to threats of flooding the city. Namor and Killmonger bond over the loss of their parents due to the negligence of others and want nothing but to have their kingdoms in peace. The pair form an unlikely, untrusting and uneasy alliance. Meanwhile, on the other side of the planet, Shuri and Stark have managed to synthesize vibranium and the heart-shaped herb, allowing for her to take on the mantle of the Black Panther. As Shuri enters the ancestral plane, she talks to T'Challa, where he reveals he couldn't strike down a man their father had wronged and what it had cost him, subtly letting her know what needed to be done. Even with upgrades, the resistance isn't strong enough, consisting of just Iron Man, Fury, Shuri and Bucky Barnes, even if they were covered in vibranium. Against Killmonger and Namor, they were not a match. Tony knew he would have to call on his old friends and let the past go. Ant-Man would have a change of heart during the battle, with the Abomination being assigned a covert op by Thaddeus Ross as the muscle of the group. All Tony could do for Falcon, Widow, Captain America, Wand and Vision was reach out and hope to get a response. But nothing. Meanwhile in Wakanda, Killmonger would assemble all his nation's army for one final push, led by the Mandarin's centuries of war knowledge, his only weakness was his son Shang-Chi, persuading him not to use the Ten Rings for evil with no luck. Killmonger would broadcast a message standing side by side with his forces. Fisk echoed the Mandarin, Namor, Mysterio and Gravik, ordering the surrender of world leaders and to meet the ruler of the repatriated world or face total annihilation. Hero involvement had denied his initial request and in the cities that heroes got involved, weapons of mass destruction would be launched. <sighs> Ramonda and Okoye excused themselves, probably sick to their stomach that they would be pitted against people they not only trained, but knew on a first name basis. Half a team or not, Stark knew it was time to take the fight to Wakanda before it became too late. The new Avengers would head to Wakanda in their vibranium laced armour, the top forces around the world showing up at the gates, outnumbered but ready for war. With Shuri activating a backdoor into the Wakanda mainframe, disabling any launch sequences and lowering its shields, he was down to Mysterio, the technology expert, to get things up and running again, making this a battle of tech and time. Charging into battle just like the first Infinity War, as the forces of New Wakanda battled the remaining heroes, outnumbering what remained of the Resistance two to one. Not only was it chaos, but the Resistance were getting decimated, with the Abomination being a pacifist as he was pummeled by a Wakandan power suit wearing Fisk and Hawkeye losing an eye to Echo. It was not looking good. With the real roadie still in scroll holding, Tony felt the pressure of not having backup and not before long was surrounded on all fronts. With his drone army and suits falling one by one, it was only a matter of time before he was next. Until out of nowhere a sonic boom knocking everyone off their feet. Looking up, Tony saw a man with wings, a falcon. Dust sweeps the battlefield, but once it's clear we see a terrifying sight and a game changer. Okoye, Black Widow, Vision, Wanda, and none other than Steve Rogers, Captain America, have joined their battle. It wasn't much, but there was now a fighting chance as Ramonda and Okoye managed to convince the heroes to step in as if world destruction wasn't a big enough threat. Thanks to Fury knowing where everyone is at all times, of course. The battle is now at a turning point with the future dictating how Earth prepares for Thanos. Will the fractured Avengers win or will Killmonger and the baddest secure Earth? On Mark Andrew hit following comment to shape how the story continues.